With enhanced graphics, smoother frame rates, and a broad range of titles from indies to MMOs, it's no wonder PC gaming is so popular. As a console devotee, I've always secretly wanted a beefed-up gaming PC to see what all the fuss is about. And now, with zero experience and little knowledge of what bit goes where, I'm building my own gaming PC from scratch. One with a state-of-the-art GeForce RTX 3070 GPU, no less. Yikes! For my fellow PC noobs, I'll be showing every step as I go. And if I get stuck, I can phone my mate Stevie, a PC veteran, to get some advice. Wish me luck! OK, so I've got some pointers here from Stevie. He says, take your time, don't be afraid to ask questions, have fun, and uh, don't worry about making mistakes because I won't hold it against you. Great that Stevie won't, the internet will. OK, so we've got an assortment of tools here, various sizes of screwdrivers, probably won't need them all. I've got some thermal paste, not to be confused with thermite paste, nobody would trust me with that. Got an anti-static wrist strap, and I've also got a cheeky shot glass for holding my screws. OK, so this is my power supply. Uh, this will supply power, surprisingly, to the components of a working PC. Hopefully. So taking this anti-static wrist strap, I'm now going to reduce the risk of damaging my PC parts with electrostatic charges by grounding myself through the power supply unit. Okay, so once it's all plugged in, make sure everything's turned off. Take your anti-static wrist strap and just attach it to the metal part of the PSU. So if I slip this on my wrist and make sure the silver bit is against my skin, I am now grounded. I'm not going to worry about anti-static charges messing up my PC components. But this guy is probably going to get in the way during the build, so I'm probably just going to put it on my ankle. It's not strictly necessary to use an anti-static wrist strap if you're careful handling your components, but it's my first build and I need all the help I can get, so I'm just being cautious. It's worth noting that not all PSUs are built the same, so these instructions won't apply to all models. But not to worry, if you install the PSU in your case first, you can also ground yourself through that. Or use an anti-static mat that plugs into a wall socket. OK, so this is my motherboard. This is the backbone of the PC. It houses all my components and allows them to talk to each other. Not literally, obviously. That would be very distracting during work hours. Looking at it now, it looks like a futuristic city from above. <laughs> so I know where the CPU goes. I'm going to get my CPU. OK, so this guy is the CPU. He is the brains of the PC and is the one responsible for retrieving and processing instructions. OK, let's take a look at you. Ooh, OK, cool. So I know I'm supposed to pick this up by the sides really delicately. Oh, it's so tiny. Oh, I feel like when someone hands me their newborn baby and I'm just like a bag of nerves. I know this little latch comes up like this and I'm supposed to look for the triangle. Align the triangle with the triangle on here. Pop that in. It's gonna just like fall in. I don't need to apply any pressure or anything. And then all I do is pull this down and hey presto, that's in place. He has a brain. So this is RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. Cheers for that, Google. This is uh, what allows my PC to multitask. So I can swap between Photoshop, voice recording, dog videos, all in a day's work. So I've got four RAM slots, but only two sticks of RAM. So I might have to give Stevie a ring. Hey mate, how you doing? Yeah, not bad. How, how's the bill going? It's not too stressful. I'm a brain surgeon now, officially. I've just put a CPU into a motherboard. So I've got two sticks of RAM, but four different RAM slots. So do I just pick the one that gives off the best vibe? This is actually a very common question. And for each motherboard, it can vary. This is down to dual channel configuration. So you want to put your RAM in the right slots in order to get the most speed and you know the most use out of the RAM sticks. If you think about it like a bus, both pairs of RAM slots are its own bus. So you actually want the RAM sticks to be on their own bus so they can you know, in enjoy the space. So for your motherboard, I believe it's slots two and slots four. These can be double checked in the motherboard manual. If you put the sticks in those slots, then you'll be all good to go. Awesome, two and four, but I will double check in the manual. So thanks, dude. No worries, best of luck with the build. Cheers, see you later. Boop. That's me hanging up. <laughs> Okay, so open catch two and four. 
and then just get this little guy lined up. Hey, there we go, nice. I think that might need to come down a bit more. Yes, hey, done. Great, both are in. I've also got these two RGB dummy sticks. There's no memory on them, they're just there to look pretty. Cool, so that's the ram done. Now on to the SSD. Oh, this little guy looks a bit like a stick of chewing gum. I'm pretty familiar with what an SSD does because they use them in the latest games consoles like Xbox Series X and the PS5. This is what I'll be installing my operating system and my games onto. And because it's an NVMe, it's so much faster than a standard solid state drive. Picture Usain Bolt being chased by a bear. So it goes in the M2 slot, but I've actually got two of them. Again, spoil with this motherboard. So I could ring Stevie, um, but he's probably dying his hair. So I'm just gonna check the motherboard manual. So the motherboard manual says that there's a difference between these M2 slots. One is a PCIe 3 and the other is a PCIe 4, which is for a faster hard drive. So my SSD is a PCIe 3, so I'll pop that in that slot and then I will keep the PCIe 4 slot free for if I get a faster one in the future. And then we take out our SSD. Okay, so I need to get one of these hexagonal screws out of here. Let's make sure I know which one that is. Ah, uh, yeah, that one. Got this little screw here to hold it down. That looks like it's good. So I've actually just seen in the manual that this M2 cover is actually a heat sink. So it's gonna draw the heat away from the NVMe, like a traditional heat sink. So it's got thermal paste on the bottom, which I will have to take the plastic off to remove before I put it back down. And that is the SSD done. So I guess it's time to get the case. This chunky boy is my case. So he is a Corsair IQ 4000X, but I'll probably give him a normal name like Tom. One thing I'm really happy about is that the IO Shield actually comes pre-installed on this motherboard because the internet said that was the hardest bit. So I am really glad that's been done for me. So that can just get slotted in. So line up the IO Shield with the back of the case. That looks about right. Now all I need to do you screw it in. Awesome, so that is all nine screws in place. Now it's time for the CPU cooler. So this is actually a liquid CPU cooler. So the heat is absorbed into the water, which then runs through a radiator, and then the fans release that heat from the case. So it's gonna help keep the brains of my PC nice and cool. So this is the radiator part, uh, obviously. There's gonna be two fans installed each on the top of it, and then that will fit into the top of the case. So this particular model of CPU cooler doesn't come with RGB fans, although there are some that do, but I've got a couple of RGB fans lying around, so I'm just gonna install those ones instead. Right, so the radiator now needs to be screwed into the top of the case, which is gonna be tricky because I don't have more than two hands. Line it up here. Okay, that is the uh, CPU cooler radiator and fans installed. I'm now gonna go and get the rear case fan uh, and install that too, just so that I know there's enough room for everything in the case. Brilliant, all my fans are now installed in the case. So it's time to put the cooler on top of the CPU. So it's already got some thermal paste applied. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put any more on or whether I put any on the CPU. So just to double check, I'm gonna give Stevie a call. Hi again, mate, it's only me. Um, got a question regarding thermal paste. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So there's some already on the, uh, the CPU cooler. It's a nice little circle. Uh, a big a big dollop, if you know what I mean. Um, but I'm not sure whether I need any more or do I put any on the CPU itself? So you already have thermal paste applied to the cooler, so you'll be absolutely fine with that. Usually, uh, if there isn't, you'd put uh, like a pea size amount on the CPU, then put the cooler on, but you'll be absolutely fine with what's already applied. A dollop is enough. A dollop is enough. A pre-applied a pre dollop is enough. Okay, cool. Thanks, mate. That should be good. Right, so I'm now going to remove the two black brackets on either side of my CPU and replace them with standoff screws that are compatible for my CPU cooler. So, need to change the bracket. Brilliant, so we are now about to take the plunge and put the CPU cooler 
splosh down onto the CPU. It's at this point that I realised I'd actually blocked access to some of the headers needed to plug vital cables into. So I had to take the cooler radiator back out, plug the cables in, and then pop it all back. So a word of advice to fellow first-time builders plan ahead. Okay, so some of the cables are in now, uh, not all of them though, and I'm going to actually do the GPU next so that I can see what I'm working with space-wise, and I've already checked that I'm not blocking any ports, <laughs> so hopefully we won't make that mistake again, uh, and then I'll tidy up all the wires at the end. Here is my beast of a graphics card, or GPU. So this is the RTX 3070, and this guy is built with ray tracing in mind, so it's going to simulate breathtakingly realistic lighting in my games. It also supports DLSS AI rendering, so you can run a game at a lower resolution, then upscale it with AI to get a better image quality with a higher frame rate. Wow. So I'm gonna remove the slot bays to put in the graphics card. So I've taken the slot bays out, and now all I need to do is put the graphics card into the PCIe slot. I consulted the motherboard manual, and it said if you only have the one GPU, you just use the top PCIe slot. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So that's the graphics card in. So next, it's the power supply and I'm gonna take care of a whole lot of wire spaghetti. We've gotta get these big, chunky cables attached to each of our various components. So here we are around the back of the case. All of the power cables have been attached to the relevant components. Now I'm just gonna connect them all up to the PSU. Now I'm popping in the fans I forgot about earlier and the front panel connectors into the motherboard. The connectors you have will depend on your case, so be sure to cross-reference these in your manuals to see what goes where. Now I'm ready to put the case panels back on Tom so he feels less naked. Right, let's get this uh, bad boy hooked up to a monitor and see if he actually turns on. Come on, Tom. Okay, this is it. This is the moment. Oh, I, I don't even look. Oh, it's not, it's not actually turning on. Oh, oh God. Oh no, what the hell have I done wrong? I haven't turned the back of the cake, the, <laughs> I haven't turned the power on. <laughs> After all that. Okay, all right, hold on, hold the phone. Oh, oh, that's more promising. That is more promising. Right, are we ready? Um, I can't, I can't believe I've, I've actually done it. It's alive! But you've probably noticed that none of my RGB fans are lighting up. Whoops! Turns out I forgot to connect the RGB components. So the next day, I went back and sorted those out while doing all the cable management to tidy things up. I also noticed that while it installed the CPU cooler correctly, once it's turned on, the LED logo was upside down, which irritated me in ways I can't quite explain. So I also removed that from the CPU, cleaned them both up with a wipe and some isopropyl alcohol, then reattached it with a pea-sized squirt of thermal paste. Easy peasy. I have a USB with Windows 10 on it, so I'll plug that into my PC to install it. I've also installed all the necessary drivers, set up my RGB components through ASUS's Armory Crate program, and used ASUS GPU Tweak 3 to make sure I'm getting the best performance possible out of my NVIDIA 3070 GPU. I've also downloaded the latest game-ready NVIDIA drivers. All that's left to do now is install Steam and head into the Federal Bureau of Control.
Yes, get in. It seemed mega overwhelming at first, but all in all, it wasn't too challenging. And now I can finally get hands on with the PC exclusives I've missed and see some of my favorite virtual worlds in gorgeous high res. If you want to know more about PC gaming, stick with IGN.